Oklahoma defensive coordinator Alex Grinch stepped to the podium for the first time in months last Friday to address media for the first day of preseason camp. In his remarks, he left no question about what his expectation is for OU's defense. He said, quote, I really don't deal in potential. The expectation here is to have an elite defense. The country's not going to care that we're installing something new. The expectation at Oklahoma is to compete and win championships. And in order to do so, we feel like you have to have an elite defense to do that. So that's what we're striving for, end quote. In striving, Grinch has already faced criticism from a sales pitch inside a living room to a recruit to the scheme he's running to the personnel he has at his disposal in his first year in Norman. Grinch has already received the full dose of not only what OU coach Lincoln Riley expects, but what fans of this team and this program expect. For his part, he is not shying away from the expectation of winning a fifth consecutive Big 12 championship and making a third consecutive appearance in the college football playoff. However, to do that, he's going to have to start small with the details that can help narrow his defensive unit down to 11 players he can trust. There's no bigger task on the defense ahead for him than positionally figuring out which of his players will play the free safety, strong safety, and nickel back position on the field. In this way, the job last year is the same as the job this year. Most folks were grasping at who might be the starters in the deep middle of the third of the field last year after a dismissal of their past defense was put on display, right? They were just bad, ranking 129th in past defense. Now you got redshirt juniors, Jordan Parker, Chance Sylvie, as well as true freshman Jamal Morris, Jeremiah Cradell, to go along with others competing for a job. Perhaps the most curious piece of this puzzle is that Grinch will not have a senior to pick from to play safety. Is going to have to rely on upperclassmen who have had their share of injuries, including Parker and Sylvie, and underclassmen who know that it means that they're probably uh, not wanting to get past off 500 yards this year, while also making their own stamp on what it means to play elite defense in the back end of OU football. And now, there's a report that he might already be without his full, full assortment of defensive backs. We're going to talk about that more in depth in the second segment. But it does go without saying that you're going to need guys like Justin Broyles, Brandon Radley Hiles, as well as your true freshman to essentially say it doesn't matter that we're down, it doesn't matter that we were bad, it matters what we think about this guy and this game going forward and staying consistent in the message and staying consistently locked in to what you have to do, not just to earn the job, but to beat Houston and keep building game after game after game. Because I have the privilege of talking about what is it going to look like to play against Texas. They do not. I have the privilege of saying, you know what, Iowa State might be a tougher game for them than anything else on the schedule. They do not. Right now, they got to get better today, and then they got to get better tomorrow, and they have to get better and better so that they can beat Houston. Because nobody knows better than Oklahoma that Houston can jump up and bite you. There's a report out by the football brainiacs claiming that Hey, man, Trey Norwood is down with a lower leg injury. I'm sure that Lincoln Riley and the staff is going to be asked about that later on today at OU Media Availability. But if that's the case, then you've already got work to do on the back end. And Trey Norwood, as much as folks might not have had him in their starting five as the, five, as the fifth best defensive back at Oklahoma, that dude was still plenty valuable because he was proving he could play every position in OU's defensive backfield. Matter of fact, his quote last spring was, nickel, corner, safety, wherever coach puts me, that's where I'm going to give my best at. It's funny because I'm getting to learn every position in the back end. That's a plus. Always great to know every position. I love having the opportunity. And he was certainly one of those guys that was beloved by former defensive backs coach Kerry Cooks as he was playing corner in the Rose Bowl 
And then later on, when Ruffin McNeil took over the interim defensive coordinator job, he was a third safety back there. So everyone who has had a hand in coordinating the defense at Oklahoma has found a way for Trey Norwood to get on the field, which is saying a lot for a guy that's coming out of Fort Smith and wasn't expected to do a whole lot. Still hasn't put on a whole lot of weight. But now, with that guy probably being your best shot at getting a Buki off the field to play nickel, now you're talking about perhaps having a guy like Justin Broyles move over there to provide some depth. And this position, this nickelback position, has been one of problem, right? Because it was Buki last year. And the more that I look at why he was picked to play nickel and why he is remaining at nickel, it's because of his psyche. One of the things that comes across about him is he's just going to have the right frame of mind and the right amount of confidence to play the toughest position outside of middle linebacker in the defense. Because playing in the secondary is a lot about knowing your leverages. And you always have leverage to the sideline, to the boundary, if you're a corner. Because that guy's undefeated. The boundary's undefeated. If you play people to the boundary, you're going to win more battles than not. And you need to have every advantage you possibly can if you play defensive back because you're at a disadvantage. And I find it to be true. I was talking to a coach here recently, and he echoed something that Mike Gundy had said, which is, hey, look, if you line up with a wide receiver in a corner, the receiver ought to beat the corner seven out of ten times. If you get a guy that can drop that to six or five, that guy's elite. And that's what you're looking for at OU. You're looking for guys that could be elite at corner. Now think about not having that leverage to the boundary, not having that leverage to the sideline, and not having any help over the top because sometimes you are going to be put out there by yourself. That's the nickel position in most defenses, which is why you're seeing guys that traditionally line up on the outside move to the inside. Last year, Dana Holgerson showed that he was going to take advantage of a shorter defensive back with no help and no leverage, by moving David Sills from the outside, inside, lining him up next to Buki, and you saw how that worked out. To say nothing of when you dropped Delaire and Turner Yell back there, he got torched too. So now most folks are trying to figure out what would you do with this nickel spot. And outside of Buki, it was Norwood. And now it seems it could be Justin Broyles. could also be Pat Fields. And you really don't know. I mean, I've, always, I've thought Jaden Davis could play that position. New uh, incoming freshman, true freshman, on campus now, coming out of St. Thomas Aquinas. He and Jeremiah Cradell are probably the most polished of the freshman defensive backs, but they also come from the most polished programs in the entire country, St. Thomas Aquinas and Modern Day. And Davis was a guy that I was talking to even two summers ago who was saying, no, one of the things that I was being looked at to do when I got to Oklahoma was play nickel because... I have the mentality, and I have the want to. And even then, he was looking at knowing how to play his leverages, learning that he needed to know where the help is. He needed to know that the linebackers are doing this, the defensive line is doing that, the corners are doing this, and the safeties are doing that. So that he knows where he has to be in space. And he can shade a guy toward the middle of the field if he has help there. He can shade a guy toward the outside if he has help there. And more or less, knowing where you're lining up to begin with, inside or outside hip, where you expect this guy to break, where you expect a route to break off, how deep you're supposed to go before you let that guy get past you and get picked up by the safety. These are all things that are really difficult to think about on the fly if you are a nickel. And the more I look at the depth chart and all of the defensive backs at Alex Ranch's disposal, I see guys that just didn't come up doing that. Jordan Parker was a corner that was asked to move to safety. Justin Burrell's the same difference. Most of the safeties are guys that came up playing strong and free. You know, Pat Fields, Jamal Morris, Jeremiah Cordell, Ty DeArmond. But there's a guy, and I think a lot of that is going to be, let's move a guy over here who we don't know exactly what position he can play in this defensive backfield, and let's say, learn this, make this your job. And Ty DeArmond is also a dude that I think could help you there. If for no other reason than he played both ways at a high school, and he was all over the field out of high school, and he's the son of a coach, which means that he was raised around this. And if anybody knows how to play defensive back and think about it in the really big football philosophy way that you have to, it's that kid. And you're going to be looking for other guys that you think can step up and do that. And that's whether Trey Norwood was healthy or not. 
Patrick, if I was to put to you, which one of these guys outside of Norwood would you want to play nickel? Who would you pick? I, again, I, I, I'm a big Trey Brown guy. I mean, he's good on the outside. Um, every time, every time you say Nickelback, I just think of the, the rock band, and a song pops in my head. But um, I, I would like, yeah, you know, Brown. I think would be a good one. It's just gross. <laughs> it started like, uh, man, like a couple years ago. Oh every God. time you say Nickelback, I just, I, I, I just hear a Nickelback song. I was trying to find one real fast, but I couldn't. It, um, let, let, thank you for that. No, no Nickelback <laughs> on this show, ever. Yeah, e- e- ever. The, uh, but no, I. Did, and again, I've always I've, I've been a Buki guy. I think that he that that he's got talent, and I think he can do it. But again, Trey Brown might be my favorite guy in the secondary. So uh, Trey Brown's going to start a corner. Yeah, I mean that's put him anywhere. Can he clone him? No, because I would say the thing about Buki, a uh, Buki. Excuse me, I keep saying that. But the thing that that's easier than, Brad, is, than than Bradley Hiles. Yeah. Well, I think that Trey Brown would probably have the same problems that Buki had if he moved to nickel. I don't think it's that easy a position to play, and. As much as people want to hate it, mm-hmm. those guys are the same. They're both very fast. They both came up playing corner. Yeah. And they and one has had the opportunity I, to play it and one is not. Yeah. And the thing that bothers me most about this is it's really that simple because we don't do this enough with quarterbacks where we say, Hey man, it's not that you're not good, it's just that guy's better or that guy got an opportunity. Yeah. And Trey Brown has never had to play nickel. Mm-hmm. He's only got to play corner. And in some ways, I think that makes Buki a better defensive back because they feel more comfortable yeah. with him playing the nickel position than they do saying, hey, we, we got enough yeah. guys that can play corner. Go ahead. You know, say Kevin came, was ta- came and talked about somebody. I, I think you alluded Program to Program director Kevin Ward? Yes. Okay. I think you alluded to this that w- w- while I was talking to him that none of these guys, these guys don't play this position in high school. Like, guys, you, you really don't have n- nickel backs in high school who are who go on to play. They were corners or they were safe. You know what I mean? They were... They, they 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 would just cover the other team's best player. I mean, it was one of those things. Playing nickel, as we pointed out a bunch, you know, Chris Harris is one of the best in the NFL because you can cover both directions. Yeah, well, Chris didn't come up playing nickel either. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I mean, I also, it's a skill developed, but yeah. I, uh, I mean, I get where you guys are coming from, but I watch a lot of high school football, mm-hmm. and at the highest level, a lot of these guys play nickel because they have to. Because the they just cover the other have, team's best player. Well, no, or... Or you just know that you have other guys that can do that. We do that in football all the time. We say, you know what, we could play the best athlete at wide receiver because that's his natural position, but what we're going to do is have that guy play halfback. And then that guy projects to do something else at the next level. And football coaches are fond of saying, you're a football player or you're not. You play where you play. And I I get the the argument there, but if you are sound technically and – you understand football from a defensive philosophy level, like I think many of these kids mm-hmm. do. You just need reps, yeah, right. And but you make a good point in that if you're if you're having your head, I'm responsible for deep third. I'm yeah. responsible for this half of the. Or field. I always have the sideline to help me. Right. Uh, then that's helpful. But also, mm-hmm. I genuinely believe that Chris Harris, for to use your example, yeah, would have been an outstanding corner because yeah. he. And that would, that's what allows him to be a great slot corner. And that position is becoming much more about football. Like, you know, as a guy that sits on the Jim Thorpe Award Selection Committee, one of the things we talk about is, hey, this defensive back award is one of the most valuable, if not the most valuable award in football because Chris Harris is the guy that you need on your defense more than you need anybody else in the NFL. Mm-hmm. Minka Fitzpatrick is the guy you need on your defense more than you need anybody else in in the NFL. You need that guy like Norwood was apparently able to do who can play every position. Matter of fact, Minka even plays snaps at outside linebacker. So some of this is, yeah, a lot of these kids didn't grow up playing this position, but a lot of this is, are you technically sound enough to do this? Are you technically sound enough to move around? Because if you are fundamentally sound, you're going to be fine. And I think that's why Jeremiah Cradell was the guy that people really liked, and Jane Davis was the guy that people really liked, is both of those guys are fundamentally sound. Mm-hmm. And so much of football, and so much of the philosophy behind football is what do your feet do? What do your hips do? How far do you drop back? Are you are you programmed to do these things? Like we make fun of the kids during the summer because they're working with a guy who calls himself the footwork king, 
But you know, most of those kids have outstanding footwork. And most football coaches would tell you, you have to have outstanding footwork to play the game. 